This is Darcy Pattison. I'm a children's book author and I do two things. I either write or I teach writing. Today we're going to talk about opinion essays. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read the book, I Want a Dog, My Opinion Essay, and I Want a Cat, My Opinion Essay. Then we're going to talk about how to use those books in your classroom. There are free downloads available on the internet. There are computer uh, internet activities for you to do with your classes. There's ways to extend the lesson for different age levels or different ability groups. So very quickly, it's going to take about 15 minutes and we're going to be done. Writing for elementary students has become more complicated with many requirements for content, organization, and language. After studying various standards, I decided to write a mentor text or a text that includes all the requirements, giving kids a model to follow as they write. I Want a Dog and I Want a Cat are fictional stories about cousins, Dennis and Melly, who decide they want a pet. They write back and forth about the best pet for their respective families. The key to getting great essays is getting kids to think through the criteria or the reasons for making a decision. They don't just say, I like this dog because he's great. That's not a good essay. Instead, they have to have some sort of reason, so they need to apply criteria to the decision-making process. Dennis and Melly have nine criteria to decide on the best dog for them. Let's see what they are. This is I Want a Dog, My Opinion Essay by Darcy Pattison, illustrated by Eva O'Neill. My cousin Melly wants a dog, and so do I. We have been emailing about what kind of dog to get, and now, at school, I have to write an essay about the best kind of dog for my family. Essay is a big word that means you just write so about something. You say it, S-A. My teacher, Mrs. Shirky, says, Dennis, you have to use criteria. It sounds like cry tear e uh. It makes me think about crying tears. It means I need reasons for the kind of dog I want. My criteria, big or little. I want giant. Melly wants tiny. How energetic? I want a couch potato who likes to watch TV with me. Melly wants a jogger. Needs exercise? I am going to love this dog and want to exercise him every day. Melly is too busy with dance and piano and playing checkers with our grandma who moved in at Christmas. She doesn't want to exercise her dog every day. Needs lots of play? I want to play with my dog before breakfast and all the time after school and all day Saturday and Saturday night and all day Sunday and Sunday night. Our grandma can play with Melly's dog all day long. A loving dog? I want a dog that stays by my side. Melly just wants a doggy kiss. Yuck! When she gets home and that's enough. Other pets? No other pets. That's why I want a dog so much. Melly has had a gerbil, a hamster, and a lizard, but right now she doesn't have any other pets. Easy to train? Yes, of course, duh. I have lots of tricks to teach him. Melly wants a dog to do sit and stay. That's all. A guard dog? Nope, we don't need that. Grandma also says no. Lots of grooming? Big no from me. Melly doesn't mind brushing a dog's coat now and then. She's just too busy to do it every day. Here is my essay. I want a dog. I want a dog. Here are some things I thought about. First, I like big dogs. I want to take him for walks, but I don't want a jumpy dog or a yappy dog. I want my dog to be happy to see me after school. I'll play with my dog before school, after school, and after supper. I'll teach my dog many things. For example, he will learn to roll over and play dead. Also, he can jump over things or through hoops. I thought about how dog, the dog would act at home. We don't have any other pets. For example, I don't have cats or hamsters. My dog must be friendly and not growl at other people. Also, I will love my dog, but I don't want to brush his hair or his teeth. Since I looked at the dog breeds and thought about my criteria, I made a decision. 
A Bernese Mountain Dog is the best dog for our family. He will be big but not jumpy. He will take walks and stay right with me. He will be smart and learn to shake hands. When the doorbell rings, he will not bark or scare people. My dog and I will be best friends. I got an A on my essay. And when mom and dad read my amazing essay, I got a Bernese Mountain Dog named Clark Kent. Melly got a Maltese named Lois Lane. Don't tell mom, but I sneak Clark into the house at night and he sleeps on my bed. He can already shake hands. Now when I get home, I drop my backpack and call, Clark! He pokes his head out of his doghouse and runs across the backyard and jumps up on my shoulders and licks my face. Doggy kisses. Yuck. Well, maybe not a big yuck. There's one more thing. Melly and Grandma and Aunt Lacey and Uncle Bob are coming next week. Clark Kent will finally get to meet Lois Lane. Now it's time for a discussion. The students should talk about what criteria are important for their family. Um, we have three worksheets that they can use as they do it. Um, and they go through the different criteria that the book uses and adds a few extra. Ask the students if they can think of any other criteria that would be important for their particular family also. It's time to see the criteria in action. We're going to do a group research project on the computer going to animalplanet.com um, and their breed selector tool. So let's see what it looks like. The dog breed selector app at the animalplanet.com. We're going to go through it and just see what kind of um, dog breeds would be recommended for the choices that we make. So let's decide that we want a small dog. Now here you're going to see that sometimes you're going to have to explain some words. This is a vocabulary lesson in and of itself. Do you want a sprinter, a jogger, or a couch potato? So this would be fast, this would be medium fast, and this would be slow. So you're going to have to do that sort of interpretation for the kids or take this as a time to teach some vocabulary. Let's say we want a sprinter. How much exercise do you want to um, devote to your dog? Daily. Let's say we have about 30 to 45 minutes. And how often will you be able to play with your dog? A few times a day. How affectionate would you like your dog to be? Gives me some love when I get home, but keeps to himself mostly. Do you have other pets? No, I'm looking for it. Look, no, but I plan on having my dog interact with other animals, so he needs to be friendly. How trainable would you like your dog to be? Very trainable, fairly trainable, or not very trainable? Not very trainable. How protective would you like your new dog to be? Extremely protective, uh, around the clock watchdog, or little to no protection needed here? Let's try that. And how much maintenance and grooming are you able to provide a dog? I want a dog that's as low maintenance as possible. And what kind of temperature tolerance does your dog need to have? Live in a cold climate, live in a warm climate, and we're somewhere in between. Let's try a warm climate. And let's see what kind of dog we get. So the top dog is the Cairn Terrier, 96% match. Now at this point, you can uh, click on, on this and it'll take you to a page just about the terrier. Um, or you can also look at the runner-ups, a Parson Russell Terrier, an Australian Terrier, a Norwich Terrier, and a Smooth Fox Terrier. Um, so this website just gives you a really great way of going through the criteria and then it narrows it down for you. By now, your students have done a lot of pre-writing. They've read a fictional story where cousins um, decide on the best dog for their family using different criteria. They've talked about the important criteria for their own families. 
and then they use the breed selector tool to find out recommended dogs for certain criteria. At this point, you can write a group essay based on the results of the breed selector tool, or during computer class or at home, they could complete the tool for themselves. If you want students to do research on breeds, this is a good time for that. You may want to have a selection of dog books available um, and let them do further um, investigation of different kinds of breeds. At some point though, it's time for them to decide the best dog for their family. This worksheet asks the students to draw their choice. The next worksheet is for the students to write. They are reminded to use linking words and a working outline is provided to help them organize the essay. For some of you, that may be the end of the opinion essay unit. If you have time, however, I think it's useful to delay the essay until you've read one more book, I Want a Cat. One good reason to do this is the reading standards, which ask students to compare and contrast two or more versions of the same story. I Want a Cat is from Melly's point of view this time, and they talk about which cat breed is best for their family. But another reason to continue is the pre-writing phase. To write opinion essays well, students need a rich and diverse pre-writing environment. It's good to go through the similar thought process such as deciding for a cat breed for their family. Then give the students the option to write about either a cat or a dog for their family. Now on the subject of cats versus dogs, people tend to get pretty opinionated and passionate. Just what we want in an opinion essay. Adding some choice always gives students more ownership of the essay. This is I Want a Cat, My Opinion Essay by Darcy Pattison, illustrated by Eva O'Neill. My cousin Dennis and I got dogs last year. Now we want cats. We have been emailing about what kind of cat to get. And now at school, I have to write an essay about the best cat breed for our family. My teacher, Mr. Eagle says, Melly, you have to have criteria. Of course I have good reasons for the kind of cat I want. My criteria, active or lazy. I want a cat that pounces. Dennis wants a lazy cat, like his lazy dog, Clark Kent. Playful or not, my cat should love to play with string or paper. Dennis says that's okay, as long as the cat doesn't scratch the new baby when it comes. Needs lots of attention? While I am at school, Grandma takes care of our Maltese dog, Lois Lane. Now Lois Lane thinks she's Grandma's pet. This time, the cat will sleep in my room and love me the most. Dennis won't spend much time with his cat because he plays baseball and walks Clark Kent. Needs for affection? I want a cat that sits in my lap. Dennis wants a warm body sitting beside him, not in his lap. Lots of meowing or quiet? Grandma takes afternoon naps, so our pets must be quiet. That new baby at Dennis's house will need a quiet cat, too. Hard or easy to handle? We both want cats that won't fuss when you pick them up. Intelligent? Smart cats love the person who takes care of them. That's me. Dennis says he wants a smart one, too, but one who knows enough not to get into trouble. Independent? I do dance and piano classes, and Grandma just taught me to play chess so I can't take care of a cat all the time. Dennis says his cat needs to take care of itself all day. He just wants the cat to sleep on his bed. Psst! His mom caught Clark Kent on Dennis's bed, and she was mad. Lots of grooming? I like brushing out a cat. I still brush out Lois Lane's long hair. Dennis says, no, no, no. Other pets? We both have dogs so our cats have to get along. Here is my essay. I want a cat. I want a cat. I thought hard about what kind of cat I wanted. First, I want a giant cat, maybe as big as Lois Lane, our Maltese dog. I don't want a tiny cat that will get lost in the house. A big cat might be heavy, but I am strong and will be able to carry it. Also, I don't care if it likes strangers as long as it's nice to everyone in our family. I like a cat that purrs, sits still, and has thick fur. I like to scratch behind a cat's ears. Sometimes after dance class, I'm tired. Therefore, I just want to flop onto the floor. 
I want to dangle a piece of string and let my cat chase it. While, when we're both tired from dancing around, I want the cat to sit quietly on my lap because I will play chess with Grandma. Since I looked at cat breeds and thought about my criteria, I made a decision. The best cat for our family is a Maine Coon cat. It will be nice and will keep surprising me. It will play with simple toys and sleep on my bed at night. I will love my purring alarm clock. I got an A on my essay, and when mom and dad read my amazing essay, I got a Maine Coon cat named Ken. Dennis got a Russian blue cat named Barbie. Guess you got to name them this time. Here is a surprise. Ken likes to watch our fish pond. Most cats don't like water, but I think he wants to jump in and swim. He even likes to dunk his food in his water bowl. Now when I get home, I go to the kitchen and get a glass of milk. Ken appears like magic and rubs against my legs. We sit on the kitchen floor and have a quiet talk. Then we go and talk to Grandma about her day. And here's one more thing. Dennis has a new sister. We will go next week to see my new cousin, Ruth. Wah! Clark Kent will get to see Lois Lane again. Woof! And Ken and Barbie will meet for the first time. Meow! As with the I Want a Dog book, um, we have three worksheets here for students to talk about the criteria for choosing a cat for their family. It's time to do group research. Animal Planet also has a cat breed selector tool. We did with the cat breeds. This is another Animal Planet app that uh, helps you go through criteria and decide what cat is best for you and your family. So we'll go through this very quickly. Um, again, this is a time when you may have to do some vocabulary development or um, just give them some synonyms as you're doing it orally. So relaxed and sedentary. Sedentary is going to be a difficult word depending on the age level of your kids. So let's say we want a somewhat active cat and very playful. And we have ample time and attention to get to the cat. We want somewhat affectionate Here meow, there meow, not too noisy. Docility, again, vocabulary is going to be important for you to have a handle on before you start this. Um, amenable to handling. Intelligence levels, we want a really intelligent cat. Independence, somewhat independent. Need for grooming, very little. And compatibility with other cats integrates somewhat well into the household with existing pets. Let's submit and see what cat breeds we get. And so there's 37 and the top ones are listed here. You can see that there's three that are tied and again you can click through to these specific breeds and get more information about them. I like the way they have the stars here to show how they rated on all of these um, criteria that we're using. And then you can read more about the Bombay cat. At this point, you've done a lot of pre-writing, so it's time for them to decide what cat breed uh, would work for their family and uh, draw a picture of it. And then it's time to write either a dog or a cat essay on which dog or cat breed is best for their family. At this point, I think the essays write themselves. The secret ingredient, of course, is pre-writing. If you do a rich and variable um, pre-writing phase, then the essays will almost write themselves. Sometimes teachers need modifications or extra things to do. One thing is vocabulary and context. You could take each of the pages and talk about certain vocabulary words. If you purchase the PowerPoint version of the book, it includes slides for author or illustrator studies. Other simple modifications include a shared or individual research project. You could research a certain dog breed, an informative essay on a certain dog breed. This story is an imagined narrative, so you could write an imagined narrative as using this as a model, or a real narrative about some experience with a dog or a cat. 
Of course, you'll incorporate speaking and listening standards as you do discussions. And um, you can do parental involvement by asking them to get involved in doing the breed selector tools and talking to their children about what's the best pet for their family, if any. We hope that this simple video will help you and your students have a lot of fun writing opinion essays. The Read and Write series continues with My Crazy Dog, My Narrative Essay. Look for another video soon on how to use it in your classroom.